silver lining Keep your gaze on the sky Reach out a hand to the silver lining And remember the reason we fly Fly until you reach the silver lining Keep your Eleven gaze Wings, on the sky. Book 2 Reach out See ya. Written by Brittany Chanel and performed by Alessa Lamb and Brittany Goodwin. Sometimes it thunders so hard that it shakes my bones. Chapter 1 CL When Jamin screamed Valerie's name, his utter agony made clear by the crack in his voice, I was certain she was lost to Nether. I angled my wings and shot back through the skylight, only to see Jamin covered in blood. Valerie was so drenched in red that it was hard to tell where her injury was. The dark ashes began to lick at her body, waiting for her last breath to whisk her away. But she wasn't gone yet. Jamin clutched her limp body to his chest, rocking back and forth. He cried and pleaded with her not to let go. Irina sprinted across the room only a few steps away. She might make it. But I couldn't wait around to find out. We'd taken out the obvious ones, but there could still be Riven hidden away in Hakari. How could this have happened? Where is Faraj? He should have been at the rupture. I'd left Valerie with Jamin. How had they gotten separated? I heard a scream outside of the palace and banked hard out of the skylight toward the commotion. A woman bounded down the cobblestone path with a snarling demon on her heels. I drew my sword and pulled my wings back, diving straight for the monster. My sword plunged through its rough body as I slammed into it. My momentum tossed me onto the cold stones, my skin scraping against the rough surface. A sharp pain shot through my left wing, but I shoved it off, standing to ready myself for the Riven's next attack. Dusty gray ash swept the beast back to nether, and my sword landed with a clang on the ground. I stretched my wing to make sure I hadn't damaged it too badly. You okay? Thorn asked, landing in front of me. It looked like you fell hard. I'm fine. I'll clear this area. Go find out what happened to Farage. Without a moment's hesitation, I took off, a fresh jolt of pain springing to life with every flap of my injured wing. But there was no time for pain. Farage could be in worse shape than Valerie, and every second counted. Adrenaline propelled me forward as much as it made each of my limbs heavy. I scanned the wheat plains for signs of Riven, but even as I was approaching the rupture, I still hadn't seen a single one outside the city walls. The sharp peaks that jutted out of the earth drew near, and I readied my sword as I shot straight for the barrier. Don't be dead. I felt the wave of energy as I cut through, and the moon's light snuffed out. It was eerily quiet, aside from the throb of my heartbeat ringing in my ears. I landed on the cliff's edge inside the rupture and listened for signs of life. CL? Before my mind could register the sound, I spun, raising my sword. I squinted through the darkness, then lowered my blade. Farage. I ran to him and threw my arms around him. You're okay. I took a breath and pulled him in. Why wouldn't I be? The Riven attacked the palace. That's impossible. Nothing got through. I placed a hand on my heart to try to ease it. You have to believe me, Faraj said. If he was at his post and unharmed, I had no doubt he was telling the truth, even if the sadness and fear in the curves of his eyes weren't enough to clear him. But the last thing I had on my mind was accusing him of anything, the only thing my racing heart seemed to care about was that he was alive. Seal, he whispered. I swear nothing got through. I believe you. I'm just glad you're okay. Tell me what happened. We cleared out the ribbon from the palace, but 
Valerie's hurt. It looked really bad, but Irina was close by. How bad? Did you see ashes? Yes. Is Jamin? How do you think? I have to get back. All right, but let me know if something else happens. There's no point in me guarding the rupture if they're getting in another way. You don't think Valerie has something to do with this, right? The accusation came quickly. If Farage, the most trusting and open of the Valkyries, was already suspicious, no doubt the others were too. Whatever was going on, it felt too orchestrated to be a coincidence. Someone was responsible. But if we turned on each other now, we'd all end up captives of Nether. I wanted to tell Farage that, to warn him against that line of thinking, but there was no time. You mean, like, she let them in and then got herself stabbed? I'm gonna go ahead and say this wasn't her doing. His shoulders dropped and he nodded. So I spun, spread my wings, and took off back toward the palace. I swallowed a mouthful of pain as I unsuccessfully tried to ease the pressure on my injured wing, throwing off the evenness of my glide. I pushed through the pain and focused on the lit palace at the peak of the city. I swooped back through the skylight into the palace. The ballroom was empty, save for a few abandoned trays and a smear of Valerie's blood across the floor. I glided through the halls and stopped short when I spotted Thorn walking toward me, his wings at the ready. His dark skin and smooth head had a sheen of sweat. His eyes were wrought with worry. The warm timber of his voice filled the hall. Irina got to her in time. She's gonna make it. Is Farage? I landed in front of him, tucking my wings away. He's fine too. He said that nothing passed through. That's impossible. He didn't know anything was wrong. The sound of a door slamming echoed through the hall, and Jamin walked around the corner. He looked up when he saw us. Irina kicked me out. Did anyone go find out what happened to Farage? He's still at his post, Thorne explained. He said nothing got through, which means they're getting through somewhere else. Ajax was here. He did this. I gaped. You saw him? You actually saw him tonight? I chased after him, but he got away. That's why I wasn't there when Valerie... He swallowed hard. Thorn eyed Jamin, folding his wings back. Did Ajax say anything? Like, what his goals were? Did he mention Valerie? Jamin paused before answering. Thorn and I exchanged a glance. I attacked him before he could say anything. Thorn's wings spread. Our only option is to patrol the city until first light. We don't know where they're getting in, which means they could be anywhere. Jamin, get the outer sector. Ciel, the middle. I'll handle the area around the palace. Stay vigilant. Without hesitation, Jamin took off, and I spread my wings to follow, but Thorn stopped me with a hand on my shoulder. He's lying. I know. So why'd you let him go? His black eyes narrowed, his intense gaze boring into me. These things need to be handled the right way. See what you can find out. Chapter 2 Valerie I awoke slowly with the lazy morning sun kissing my cheek. I could feel the presence and hear the shuffle of people in the room, but the hushed tones of whispered conversations were a stark contrast to how I'd first come into the Lux realm. I felt warmth on my shoulder where I'd been pierced and slight pressure, but no pain. Had I died again? I tested my memory and everything I'd had the night of the party. Bramberry ale, gossip, and overindulgence of dessert seemed to remain. I was Valerie, a former Valkyrie in desperate need of training. I remember seeing Argus cross the room and feeling the compulsion to run toward the Riven and rescue him. Before that moment, I was sure the other Valkyries had mistaken me for someone else, and after it, I was certain they hadn't. 
It might have been buried within my lost memories, but I had fight left in me. My thoughts moved to Ajax, his yellow-green eyes, the exposed bones of his crimson wings, and a chill ran through my body. Ajax seemed to think I had something to do with the attack, and that unsettled me. If there was a fighter in me that I never knew about, perhaps there was a traitor, too. As my eyes adjusted to the sun, I squinted to get a look around the room. I was certainly not in my apartment, based on the 50-foot ceilings and the cloud-like mattress I had sunken into. I was still at the palace somewhere. Irina sat at the foot of my bed with her face buried in her arms, and Faraj and Thorn were chatting at the door. She's awake, CL said suddenly, popping up to the bedside from out of my field of vision. The Valkyries rushed over, crowding around me, their unrested, dark-circled eyes dripping with concern. Uh, great party, guys. The room erupted in nervous laughter as I pushed up onto my elbows. Slowly, Irina said. Her hair was frizzy and her bright eyes were rimmed much darker than the others. She looked a lot worse than the last time I'd seen her. I scanned the rest of them for injury, but didn't see anything obvious. I noticed the room was one Valkyrie short. Is Jamin okay? He's fine, CL said, her response quick. Faraj added, he just stepped out for some air. I nodded. No doubt Ajax's little speech confirmed everything Jamin had worried I might be. Just when we were starting to tolerate each other. I wasn't surprised he wasn't here. It was too early to tell whether he'd mentioned what Ajax said to the others. Are there any leftover cream puffs? Irina beamed at me. How's the pain? I actually feel good. How is that possible? Thorn patted Irina on the back. Irina's a healer. An exhausted one. He turned to her. She's all right. You should go home and get some rest. Irina gave my leg a nurturing squeeze before she stood and headed out, her footsteps dragging along with her singular wing. Actually, Thorn said, can everyone give Valerie and me a few minutes? A flare of guilt slammed into my stomach. Here we go. I guess Jamin ratted me out after all. The Valkyries said their brief goodbyes, and I felt flooded with warmth, thinking how they'd all worried about me. It made me feel like I actually belonged. Too bad it was all about to go up in flames. Thorn took a seat on the side of the bed. The tips of his wings brushed against my legs. His bald head made his pointed ears stand out, and I was tempted to ask him why he was the only Valkyrie that had them, but I couldn't work up the nerve. He took a deep breath, his eyes distant as if he was sorting through his words. That was a brave thing you did. Argus made it out of there because of you. The memory of that monster flashed through my head, and I broke eye contact, my gaze drawn to the light of the window. I'm glad he's okay. We somehow managed not to lose anyone to Nether, and Irene has been busy making sure all the injured are tended to. Can I ask how long I was out? Three days. Well, no wonder I'm so hungry. Thorn smiled but it didn't reach his eyes. Do you happen to know how Ajax and the Riven are getting through? Is it not through the rupture? He shook his head and began to fiddle with the edge of the pillow. Farage was guarding it, and nothing came through. I'm sorry, I don't know. It was the truth, but it still felt like a lie. He nodded, his expression softening. It might be a coincidence but there seems to be a link between these dreams you're having and Ajax showing up here. And if you don't mind, I'd like to take some precautions. Absolutely. I'll do whatever you need. He chuckled, a deep rhythmic sound that made me involuntarily smile. I'll hold you to that. We're going to have you stay with one of the Valkyries so we can put out an alarm whenever the dreams happen. Okay. And I'd like you to keep a dream journal by your bed. So if you have one of these dreams again, you can jot down the details. 
I can do that. It wasn't nearly the Herculean task I'd been expecting. Good. You should get some rest, because now that you've shown your skills, CL is biting at the bit to get you back in training. I'm actually kind of excited to get started myself. His brows shot up. I like this Valerie. I liked her too. She was capable, strong even. I was ready to put everything behind me. I could start fresh with training, and living with CL would give me a chance to get to know her better and maybe get her to open up about the past. So is she going to meet me here tonight to take me to her place, or are you going to give me directions? I could see the delight in his face, but couldn't place why until he said, Actually, you will be staying with Jamin. I had a one in five chance of this not being a total disaster. How the heck did I end up with him, of all people? Does he know that? He's been made aware. And he agreed to it? What the hell? Was this a keep your enemies closer type deal? He stroked his goatee. Try not to kill each other. Without another word, just a snicker, he stood and headed for the door. You're just going to drop a bomb like that and go? I asked, crossing my arms. Someone has to bring you the leftover cream puffs. He called over his shoulder. I straightened up. Proceed. Chapter 3, CL. I stewed in the palace hallway, playing back the last three days in my head. The attack on the party was weirdly reminiscent of the eclipse night. It was odd missing my shifts at the rupture. But if the enemy was getting into Lux from somewhere else... It was safer to have the Valkyries all posted nearby Hakari. For a moment, amidst the chaos, I was pulled back to the night of the eclipse and the events that led to Tayo being lost to the nether. Specifically, my part in it. I shuddered whenever I thought of the look on his face that night. It was like reliving it all again. There was no way to go after him. No way to pass in and out of the nether the way Ajax seemed to. And without a true leader, I could feel our team weakening. There was no doubt in my mind that since the eclipse, the Riven had been growing more powerful. We were vulnerable, and the cracks were starting to show. As the next eclipse approached, I feared for the end of a split realm. I didn't know what Dusk had promised Ajax, but I was sure his new abilities played some kind of role in that decision, leaving me to wonder what role Valerie played in all of this. The only hope that I'd felt since the attack was Argus's account of how Valerie had rescued him from the Riven. I was starting to worry that the old her was never coming back. Hell, she'd been afraid of her own shadow since she returned. It was hard to believe that she had somehow faced off with a Riven alone, I shuddered at the memory of Valerie lying still while blood pooled around her. That had been too close. I had to be more vigilant and figure out how the Riven were getting in to Lux. Maybe we'd trusted too much in our system, and now with one blow, it was no longer possible to feel safe anywhere in Lux. After the party, more than 40 souls had decided to move on rather than risk losing themselves to Nether. We could no longer protect them. We'd nearly lost Valerie. The ashes had gathered to take her, just as they'd done a few moments before Tayo had been swept away. Thorne ordered us to patrol through first light, just in case, and I was glad to focus on hunting leftover demons instead of the safety of my oldest friend. When the sun rose and we were sure there were no more Riven in Lux, I found myself facing a defeated Valkyrie team. It felt like we held our breath that first day, and when Valerie started to recover and the ashes cleared away, we all rested a little easier except for Jamin. For three days, Jamin paced at Valerie's side and then slipped out before anyone else realized she had woken up. That, paired with whatever Ajax had said to him, left a bad taste in my mouth. Even stranger was how 
coldly he'd treated her since her return and how eagerly he'd volunteered to take her in. I couldn't be sure yet if that was because he trusted her or because he didn't. No wonder she was having trouble remembering who she was. It felt like all of us were hiding something. The devastation and guilt we'd all felt after the eclipse, for all the lives lost, had caused us to lock away the details of that night from each other and even from ourselves. I'd had enough of this shit. I had half a mind to cut through the rupture and take Ajax down. I didn't care what happened to me. Next time he showed his face... A shout at the far side of the hallway drew my attention, and I looked up to see Jamin with his sword drawn and Ajax's shredded tapestry at his feet. I hurried over, amusement pushing a smile onto my face. My sentiments exactly. He was so worked up that I could see the rise and fall of his chest through his armor. We have to do something, he spat. Everyone's going to fucking die anyway. We have to do something. His gaze moved to me, and I could see the fire behind his eyes. I lowered my voice. You mean go to Nether on purpose? We'll never make it out of there alive. He poked at the frayed tapestry at his feet with the end of his blade. He did. I looked back over my shoulder for Thorn, but the hallway was clear. I sighed. She's all right. She's safe. This time, what attacked us the other night was only a fraction of an eclipse night, and we almost lost her. How long do you think her or anyone is going to make it with Ajax pulling Riven in and out of Lux outside of the fucking rupture? My mind flashed back to him as he'd cried over Valerie's limp body. Jamin, when was the last time you slept? He turned away in a huff. Wait, wait! He turned back and eyed me. I'm with you. We get in, we take down Ajax, and look for Tayo before dusk gets to us. The anger in his face washed away. How do we get through? The rupture? We'd definitely die if we tried going through there. I was thinking it would be better if we could find the other opening, wherever they're coming in from. I doubt they'd expect that. He didn't respond, but the hardness in his gaze implied his agreement. I'm going to go searching for it when I patrol today. I need you to rest and look after Valerie until I find it. Thorne has been searching since Valerie saw Ajax the first time, he hasn't even found a single clue as to how Ajax or the Riven are passing through. I tossed my hair over my shoulder. Thorn isn't me. He held my gaze for a few seconds before my certainty seemed to mollify him. He nodded and started down the hall before stretching out wings and flying out one of the palace skylights. It was a temporary fix, but finding the breach was not a mission I took lightly. If Thorn found out that we were planning to enter the nether realm, he'd lose his shit. I didn't even want to imagine what he'd do. Farage and Irina wouldn't take it much better. Even knowing that, I had to admit that I sided with Jamin on this. And I had to believe that if Valerie were herself, she would too. If Lux was going down, I was going down swinging. Chapter 4. Valerie. I don't know what I'm freaking out about. He's just a guy. A sexy, shirtless guy who no doubt plans to kill me in my sleep. I clutched my backpack to my chest, and for the tenth time since I'd set off down the moonlit path, I checked that my dagger was still strapped to my leg. I don't care. I'll sleep with my dagger under my pillow. The moonlight was obscured each time Thorn crossed over it on his patrol, and I felt safer knowing he was looking out for me, but that relative safety was about to come to an end once I reached my destination. I froze outside Jamin's apartment. Get your ass in there, Thorn shouted from the sky. Mind your business, I called back with a sly smile. 
The door swung open, and I almost choked on my tongue. Oh, uh, hi. Jamin's hair was wet, but at least he had a shirt on this time, although I wasn't sure if I was glad about it or not. Hi, he said flatly, taking my backpack, which I had hoped to use as my last line of defense, and placed it on a table beside the door. Wow, Thorn called. I can feel the awkwardness from here. Jamin rolled his eyes before he ushered me in and closed the door behind me. Once inside, he took a deep breath before putting his hands in the pockets of his sweatpants, which for some reason seemed like a calculated move. Well, this is it, he said finally, with a general sweep of his arm before shoving his hand back into his pocket. I'd seen it once before but the apartment was set up just like mine, with a notable size difference and an inverted floor plan. Have you eaten? He asked. Yep, I'm all set. His jaw was clenched. You take the bed upstairs. I'll take the couch. Let me know if you have another dream about Ajax. I picked my backpack up off the table. Look, I'm sorry you got stuck with me. Let's just get through this without killing each other. Thorne said this was just temporary. He pressed his lips together. Okay. Unable to bear the awkward silence another minute, I headed directly for the loft, but froze at the bottom of the stairs. Crap, I forgot to pack my hairbrush. I shrunk under Jamin's hard, emotionless expression. But after a long delay, and some kind of inner battle... He crossed his arms and nodded to a row of closets that were tucked away under the loft. The one on the far right has a bunch of your stuff. I chewed my bottom lip, trying to cut the thousands of connections my brain was trying to make. Okay, thanks, I said as I headed up the stairs. You don't want to know why your stuff is here? I turned, leaning over the railing. That depends. Are you going to tell me? You're going to be staying here, so I figure we should get this part out of the way. Shoot. We used to hook up, but it was just sex. Then the eclipse happened, and I haven't thought about you since. Mystery solved. I felt a weight on my chest that threatened to spill out at any moment. So he really did hate me then? Had everything I'd felt been just a mutual attraction we'd indulged in once upon a time? Perfect. Got it, I said, hurrying up the stairs. I snuck a glance at Jamin, only to see my own feelings reflected in his solemn expression for a fraction of a second before he turned away and lay on the couch. I ran my fingers over the bandages on my injured shoulder as I settled into Jamin's bed. It didn't hurt much unless I allowed the memory of the Riven's claw to latch on, so I actively tried to think of anything else. I closed my eyes, and the scent of spearmint tickled my nose, urging me to focus on one topic in particular. How do you have a just-sex arrangement with someone and have a closet of their things? Furthermore, it must have been life-changing sex because why else would I have put up with someone so moody? I'd spotted a handful of attractive guys at the party that couldn't have been any worse to hang out with. Why him? I'd spent so much time pushing to find out the truth, certain that we had some kind of relationship. But now that I knew him better and finally heard him admit it, it was hard to believe that we had. I just couldn't imagine it. Or I thought I couldn't. I didn't remember getting out of bed, walking down the stairs, or even how I ended up on the couch with Jamin. But when I got there... He sat up, and before I could fumble to justify my reasoning for being there, he leaned in and kissed me. Desperation exploded between us as his arms slipped around my waist, and I twisted to straddle him. I felt an ache at the bottom of my stomach as the kiss deepened. His lips were warm and familiar. The taste woke something in me. Maybe the person I used to be. I took a frustrated handful of his t-shirt and he responded by drawing back, yanking it off and tossing it to the side. We stared breathlessly at each other, his dark eyes reading me. 
My body shook with adrenaline that urged me to continue. I couldn't remember what we used to be, but I could tell we'd done this before. If he was waiting for me to stop him, he'd be sorely disappointed. I pulled off my shirt, and before it even hit the floor, Jamin was on me. He kissed me harder this time, his tongue sending pulses through my body. He pulled me closer with one arm and slipped me out of my pajama bottoms. He put his hand flat on my chest and lay me back across the couch. I closed my eyes, lending my focus to other senses. I heard his sweatpants hit the floor. Then his soft lips found mine as the warmth of his body pressed down on me. I ran my fingers down his back and felt the raised skin like a scar where his wings often were. Valerie, he groaned against my lips. It's okay. Don't stop. I tensed and bent my knees, angling my hips to him. My brain fogged, dizzy with wanting as he descended to obey. Valerie. I jogged awake. Jamin leaned over me, fully clothed. His eyes were wide, and after a brief look around, I realized I was still in bed. Shit. A dream? Seriously? But my body didn't seem to know the difference, as I still felt worked up. I ran a hand over my face. W what's going on? But the moment I looked up at him, the memory of his lips on mine flooded back, and heat raced to my face. I turned my gaze away, but my mind's eye was playing our little dream encounter on loop. Crap, did he get hotter? Or was the dream to blame for everything? A hard object landed on my stomach, and I sat up with a grunt to find it was a notebook. I shook my head, disoriented, as the pen followed shortly after. I glared at Jamin. What's your deal? Why are you throwing things? He inched forward, the bed dipping down where he sat. You were tossing and moaning. I could tell you were having another one of those Ajax dreams. Quick, before you forget it, write down the details. I longed for simpler, less embarrassing times, like when I was impaled by a ribbon. Anything but this. No, I, I didn't. Why are you being difficult? This is the whole reason you're here. Tell me every detail of what happened. I had half a mind to blurt out the truth to make him as uncomfortable as I was. I didn't dream about Ajax. We're safe. Now get off my bed. He sat up a little straighter, his gaze piercing through me. I don't believe you. Your face is red and you're sweaty. He reached forward and felt my head with the back of his hand, and I slapped it away. I'm fine. He sighed. Look, Valerie, I'm trying to trust you, but you're making it really hard. I didn't tell the others what Ajax said. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. His voice was soft and low, and it sent a shiver down my spine. I can see something's off with you. I can tell you're lying. He was in arm's reach, and all I wanted was to grab him and roll around to check if he lived up to the dream hype. But instead, I said, It wasn't Ajax. That's all you need to know. Anything else is an invasion of privacy. Please, it doesn't have to be specific. I just want to make sure it's not related to what's happening. The wave of nerves that surged through me was the only warning of what erupted out. It was a sex dream. Stop, shut up, leave it there. About you. He stood so quickly that I half expected him to topple off the loft. Instead, his head slammed into the ceiling above the loft, and he fumbled to compose himself. Oh, then I'm sorry I pushed. I shouldn't have. No, you shouldn't have. With a tilt of my head... I caught a glimpse of a smile playing at the corners of his mouth as he started down the stairs. Interesting. Out of curiosity, I said, halting him in place, is the skin on your back raised where your wings are supposed to be? Good night, I scoffed. Guy gives this whole lecture about honesty. Fine, yes. 
Now go to sleep. So, would you say it was less of a dream then, and more of a memory? He groaned, but even though he'd gone downstairs and my eyes were closed tight, I could still hear the smile in his voice. Chapter 5, Ciel I waited half the morning in my apartment for Jamin to show up. He was supposed to come immediately after he walked Valerie to the palace for Irina's healing treatment, but I was starting to wonder if things had somehow gone terribly wrong. I carefully unrolled the map of the Lux Realm, grabbing various objects from my kitchen to hold down the curled edges. I traced over each of the seven islands, making a mental note of which ones I'd prefer to search versus which ones I was hoping to pawn off on Jamin. The islands were vast, but with wings, there seemed to be no distance out of reach. The problem was, we didn't really know what we were looking for. A second breach between Lux and Nether wasn't necessarily going to look the same as the rupture. Finally, Jamin knocked, and I shouted for him to let himself in. I was immediately thrown by his gleeful smirk as he entered. What's with you? What do you mean, he said, taken aback. I eyed him. You look weird. Happy. He brushed me off and walked over to the map. Weird and defensive? Any chance of me shrugging off died on the vine. I grinned and began circling him like a hawk would its prey. Did something happen with you and Valerie? He didn't bother to look up at me. No, I'll take Luxwood Forest and Crimson Orchards. Got him. Why don't you just tell her how you feel? He cracked his knuckles before his gaze moved to me. Because it's not her. Everyone is so quick to forget that she left us that night. We might not know why, but she went willingly. There's a good chance that she's the reason Ajax and the Riven are getting through. He moved his attention back to the map, as if those would be the final words on the matter. But if he was trying to seem neutral, he failed. Pain dripped from every word and he glared at the map like he was ready to set it on fire. I didn't want to interfere or cause him more pain, but whatever method he'd chosen to deal with Valerie's return wasn't working. Not to be a dick, but sack up, man. You don't believe any of that stuff about Valerie. I didn't back then, and maybe if I hadn't been so blinded by my feelings for her, I would have noticed that something was up. I could have saved the lives we lost on Eclipse Night. I understood. I carried around my own portion of the blame for that night. After all, the person I was charged with protecting had been dragged right into Nether with a claw through his chest. I shook away the memory. It was hard to guess how Jamin felt about that night. Part of me always thought he blamed himself for losing Valerie, but apparently... I had that bass backwards. What is this really about? The Jamin I know would have trusted Valerie to his last breath. That guy is gone. I crossed my arms. I don't believe you. I think you're scared. Yeah, I'm scared. Shit, that would have worked on me. He took a sharp breath through his nose. I'm scared that when this next eclipse comes... Ajax will finish the job, and Dusk will get what he wants, control over both realms. No, that's not it. I resumed, circling him. I think you're afraid she won't fall in love with you a second time. He froze, with his brows knitted together. Victory. But his silence unexpectedly cut me. Look, Jamin, I'm not suggesting you scream you're my wife at her. I'm just saying it's okay to shoot your shot. The memories might be gone, but the feelings aren't. I can tell. He shifted, and then in a blink, his serious expression brightened. She did have a sex dream about me. See? Now, don't fuck it up. Or should I say, stop fucking it up. 
I put up my hands and surrender. That's all I'm going to say. Fine, but can we please talk about this plan of yours? Right, so I thought we could split up the map and search the... Jamin retracted his wings and he plopped into a chair. Let's think this through. If he was trying to take over my meeting, he was going to get his ass kicked. That's more your speed. I put my wings away and took a seat beside him. He looked out the window. The bulk of the ribbon that came through were at the palace. Yeah, but so were most of the citizens. We didn't really have anyone to spot them before they crashed the party. True, but we didn't see any pattern or area outside the palace that would indicate they came from anywhere else. Not to mention, both times Valerie saw Ajax, it was also at the palace. I crossed my arms. You seriously think there was a rupture at the palace and none of us noticed it? He shrugged. I stood. Let's search it then. Hold on. Cool, but I don't work for you. If he heard me, he didn't react. He was too lost in thought. I sat back down. Okay, say you're right. Why now, after a year of nothing? And also, how is Ajax suddenly able to move between realms? His eyes narrowed, his gaze shifting as he worked through the puzzle. The only person who can cause a rupture is Valerie, so either she is helping Ajax somehow, or we lost the upper hand to dusk before the eclipse and didn't know it. I pulled my hair back into a ponytail. I'd always assumed the eclipse was the catalyst, since that was the night everything had gone to hell. I knew he didn't really believe Valerie betrayed us, but where else was he going with this? He leaned forward, resting his elbows on his knees. This is going to sound crazy, but walk it through with me. This sounds promising. When we first enter this realm, what happens? Our soul splits. Right, our strengths in life get embodied in lux as we see ourselves, and our weaknesses the part of us still tied to life, get embodied in a ribbon and sent to nether. Right. What about the Valkyries? He paused to gather his words. If the rest of us were enhanced with abilities, would it be possible that our equivalent ribbons were too? The thought hadn't occurred to me, but it opened up a thousand terrifying possibilities. That means that since Valerie could open and close the barrier between the realms, maybe the anti-Valerie could too. I swallowed a lump in my throat as Jamin and I both silently shuffled through the same thoughts. There might be dark reflections of each of us, all with our respective powers. If that was the case, Dusk did have the upper hand. He had the six shadow versions of us. Six Valkram plus Ajax. I nodded. This theory changed everything. I headed for the door. I think we should take this to Thorn. Jamin cut in front of me and had his wings folded back behind him before I even saw him move. He frowned. I thought we agreed that was a bad idea. But we're not looking for another tear in the barrier. This is something else. I was irked by the way he stood between me and what I was trying to do. Clearly, it had been too long since I'd crossed blades with him. He glared at me. It doesn't change the fact that we need to get in there. If we really do have dark Valkyries to contend with, Valkram, fine. If we're going to contend with Valkram... We need to be smarter. We're not going to be able to do this without Thorn. Jamin looked toward the window, the bulge of his clenched jaw in full view. He's too careful, ever since he lost Lily. Why are men so weak? I sighed. Fine, I won't say anything if you still want to move forward with our old plan. 
We have no evidence that your new theory is even correct, and I hope it's not. But either way, I say we have a team meeting and decide together what to do next. You actually think you'd be willing to take the team into Nether? I shrugged. I don't know. But I do know that if we don't start working together, we're going to lose Lux. I pushed past him. Think about it. Where are you going? He called. I'm going to train Valerie. No matter how this goes down, we're going to need her to earn her wings back. She might be our only way in. Chapter 6 Valerie At the palace, I took a moment alone to check my injury in the mirror. The smooth, black, tattoo-like markings on my shoulder, from when the ribbon had broken through, still glowed yellow from Irina's magic. The pain had gone away, but she said the markings would take a few more treatments. I wasn't sure yet if I wanted her to remove them at all. They looked kind of badass and reminded me every time I saw them that I was still me. I headed back into the bedroom, and Irina was waiting. Her tapping foot was the only indication that she was in a rush, as her smile seemed genuine. As she pressed her glowing hands to my shoulders, I was glad to see her looking more rested than the night before. But after the treatment, she ushered me out quickly, and I saw a man on his way in. How many people could she treat in a single day? I was in awe of her power and greedily wondered what skill I'd had when I'd been a Valkyrie. I couldn't imagine anything being as cool or as useful as healing. Irina could heal, and Farage could shift forms, but I'd yet to glimpse of the other's abilities. When I arrived at Jamin's apartment, I unlatched my dagger, headed up the stairs, and sunk into bed. Something sharp dug into my back, and I arched it, scrambling to free myself— I reached behind me and pulled out a long, shimmery feather. Unlike Jamin's jet black feathers, it was white with a hint of purple. Did he leave me some kind of gift? Or was someone else in here? My thoughts turned to my portrait on the palace tapestries. It couldn't be mine, right? I hopped up and bounded down the stairs to the bathroom. I turned to take a look at my back in the mirror. To my dismay, I saw nothing out of the ordinary, just my bare shoulders and the mark where the ribbon's talon had poked through. I heard footsteps in the living room and darted in, assuming it was Jamin, but to my surprise, I found C.L. waiting for me. Her hair was pulled into a ponytail, a look I hadn't seen her try yet, and she was wearing a wicked, mischievous grin. I hear you had a sex dream about Jamin, she said, Laughter threatening to burst from her cheeks. I'm going to kill him. What's that? She asked, nodding to the hand behind my back. I held up the feather like it was a sword, and I was charging into battle. Her eyes lit up. It's yours? I strut over to her, waving the feather over my head like a dancer. She watched with amusement before saying, Good. I'm expecting to see you kick ass today at training. Are we going to Luxwood Forest again? I have something else in mind. I followed her out of Jamin's apartment, my eagerness for the day draining as she snickered to herself about today's destination. It's like I knew exactly where she was taking me, but I wouldn't let myself believe it. My stomach dropped as she lifted me into the air, and the feeling of weightlessness consumed me. The city shrunk beneath us as we soared over the ravine and far above the plains, toward the rupture. I don't know if I'm ready. My voice was swallowed up in the whipping wind. The rocky mountains drew near, and instead of banking left into the invisible barrier that led to the rupture, Ciel dropped our altitude, gliding down the steep and jagged edges of the mountain summit. I clutched the sharp stones like a cat about to fall in water, but below me were rows of rocky mountain face, waiting for me to slip so they could gobble me up and send my ass to nether. Alighting, C.L. proceeded to lie across the rocks, stretching her wings like this was a fine vacation spot. You're insane, I yelled. This isn't new information. 
Are you sure all of this is necessary for training? She shrugged. You were afraid at the party. Maybe that fear will help motivate you. I have to stop taking it easy on you. My eyes bulged. You've been taking it easy on me? She smirked and got to her feet. Follow me. CL trotted down the side of the steep cliffs like it was a fine gold-accented staircase, while to me, every rigid step felt like it would be my last. The uneven surface crumbled, scattering loose debris beneath my feet, sending cracked stones skittering down the side of the mountain to their doom. I stayed low, pressing my hands against the rock face to steady myself. As the strands of brown and pink hair fluttered across my eyes, CL disappeared around a corner a few yards away, but the most I could do was keep from falling. Keeping up with her was out of the question. To my relief, when I turned the corner and the terrain flattened out, there was plenty of room for CL to land in this part of the mountain, but I had no doubt scaring the shit out of me was one of her greatest joys. Where is it? She muttered, peering at the rocky surface. I stepped onto the relatively flat plain, the mountain peaks framing the space and blocking the view of the world beyond. The flatness amidst the mountaintops looked man-made but safe, and I fought the urge to bend down and kiss the ground with relief. My legs were jelly, a testament to my nervousness as I hung over the edge. These Valkyries all thought they were so brave, but it's easy to not be afraid of heights when you have wings. Val. I found it. I spun to see the end of CL's wings disappear into what looked like a cave. If she'd brought me out here to kill me, she'd certainly chosen a spot with no witnesses. I took my time soaking up the fleeting sunbeams as they pushed through clouded skies. I peered into the darkness, my thoughts immediately thrusting me back to the rupture. I hoped this wasn't going to be like that, but the hope drained away as I stepped up to the opening of the cave. CL? My voice echoed through a much larger space than I had imagined. I waited for a response, and when none came, I took a deep breath and willed myself to enter total darkness again. Chapter 7 CL I felt the swell of pride when I heard Valerie's clumsy steps trudging into the cave. She was once a graceful fighter, but she'd forgotten how to be comfortable in the dark, a skill essential for a Valkyrie. I was hoping we'd be able to make a little progress on it today, and the fact that she was willing to follow me in here said a lot about how far she'd come already. CL? Her voice filled the cave. After a hundred years of taking orders from her... I had to admit, I kind of liked seeing her so lost. I considered giving her a few minutes to make her way to me, but my softer side gave in. I'm here. What horrors have you lined up for me today? Blind combat. I reared my fist back and struck Valerie across the cheek. She stumbled, taking in a sharp breath of surprise. What the fuck, CL? That's the worst thing that can happen to you in here. Now that we've gotten it out of the way. Her fist flew past me, but she lost her footing. Good. Now stop relying on your eyesight. It's a crutch. What do I rely on? The crazy bitch who just sucker punched me? I bit back a laugh. I'm pretty sure I said the same thing when you trained me. I felt her square up in front of me, and this time her stance was more solid. You rely on your instincts, and those have nothing to do with your memories. I took another swing, but this one slipped past her. Good. Excitement roared to life as everything went silent. That's it. Don't try to remember. Just go for it. Her leg swung toward my face, and I narrowly stopped it with my forearms. She slipped away, her steps falling silent on the stones. My wings twitched in anticipation. A sudden pulse nicked the bottom of my chin, and I scrambled to recover as Valerie's next attack struck me square in the side, knocking the wind out of me. Good, Valerie, I huffed. Good? I'm totally awesome! 
Why didn't you tell me to turn the lights out before? I chuckled and swept some of my hair off the back of my neck where it had stuck to my sweat. Oh, shit, not you again, Valerie muttered. You were the master, and I was your best apprentice. Second? Before I could answer, Jamin's voice cut through the darkness. That's right, second. My body tensed. Crap, I didn't hear you come in. Really? Valerie did. She knew it was me, too. I tried to scare her. Valerie scoffed. Dick? Jamin drew closer, his voice lowering. I guess your training idea was dead on. Can I talk to you for a second? I followed him toward the opening of the cave. When we reached the light, I could see his eyes were twitchy and his body tense. That thing you were looking for at the palace? What? What did you find? He looked back at the cave entrance, but Valerie didn't follow us. Jamin leaned in, his voice barely a whisper amidst the squall. I was poking around when I saw Irina slip into the basement storage room of the art gallery. I crossed my arms. And? She opened a wall. I couldn't check it out without letting her know I was watching, but the way she kept checking to make sure she was alone? I'm telling you, something's up. I sighed. I don't know, Jay. Unless you saw a ribbon poking out of there, I have a hard time believing there's some trapdoor rupturing Lux. And if there was, Irina would be the last person who would be responsible. We know her. She's a healer with absolutely nothing to gain by letting Riven through. His eyes narrowed. You know her better than we knew Valerie? It was a punch to my gut. CL, I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm just saying, let me take over training for an hour as you go have a look for yourself. If you don't think something's up, we'll look elsewhere. I shoved his shoulder. Geez, if you want a few minutes alone with Valerie, all you had to do was ask. His blank stare was as much reply as I needed to feel victorious. With a nod of my head, I stepped out onto the landing, spread my wings, and took off. It wasn't that I didn't believe Jamin. He was as smart as they came. But ever since the eclipse, he'd never recovered from whatever had happened. Accusing fellow Valkyries was a slippery slope. I figured I could at least humor him, but that didn't mean I wanted to broadcast to Thorn or Irina that I was snooping around the palace. I chose a less common entrance from the side of the southern cliffs that fed into the lower floors. It mainly held excess supplies for sudden influxes of souls, which only typically happened after major disasters in the living world. I came in low, towards the cliff's edge, tucking my wings behind me and maneuvering myself toward the opening, which grew as I closed in on it. I stepped into the darkened, torch-lit corridors, making my way toward gallery storage. The lower levels of the palace were a labyrinth, I had expected Jamin to have a full and fruitless search that would last for several days before he reported to me, not for him to come find me an hour after I set off with Valerie for training. If I hadn't taken his word for it that day at the rupture, though, we might not have gotten Valerie out of there. If there was a rupture somewhere in the palace, there wasn't any sign of it. The torchlights burned steadily, and there were no wisps of ash or riven lurking in the shadows. I begrudgingly turned into the art gallery storage. The room was littered with a parade of sculptures, tombs, vases, candelabras, and assorted treasures crafted by the finest artists to pass through Lux over thousands of years. I paused when I came to a sculpture of a riven. The likeness was unsettling, but not fully accurate as the white marble couldn't fully capture the shifting ashes of the being. My eyes moved to the back wall, which, like all the others, was stacked with rows of dusty tapestries. I heard the creak of movement, and my heart leaped into my throat as my hands drifted instinctively to my sword. I drew it, and something crashed behind me. I stood, panting, glaring at the tapestry that I'd knocked over with my wing, 
Then I heard the scrape of shifting stone. I spun, and a portion of the wall slid open, and the resulting displaced wind rushed through with a whistle. This doesn't mean anything. With my sword drawn, I crept toward the opening, adrenaline waking my senses and pumping energy into my veins. I slammed open the stone door, ready to show whatever baddies inside what a badass I was. I froze. Of all the horrors swirling through the darkest parts of my imagination, none compared to the total what-the-fuckery that I saw in that room. Chapter 8 Valerie There was no use trying to squint through the darkness to see my opponent. It was as if the dark stones had swallowed every speck of light, leaving nothing but our other senses to lean on. Without my eyes, there was nothing but my instincts and what my body remembered. But even with that advantage, Jamin was considerably fiercer than CL. Or perhaps he was more motivated to take me down. He landed an elbow to my gut, and I doubled over to catch my breath. I could practically feel his smile through the darkness. A silent stab to my shriveling ego. You know, I wheezed. You don't have to enjoy this so much. Believe me, I do. I bent my legs and sprung up with a spinning hook kick aimed right at his face. He blocked it and chuckled. It was a delightful, familiar sound that tickled something in me. I let myself get lost in the sound, letting it stir up a half-memory. Jamin shifted and lunged to attack, but I no longer needed to guess where he was or listen to his breath and his footsteps. Instead, I remembered him. Each jab, each attack, was a fragment of a dream that I pieced together as he launched at me. We exchanged blocks, falling deeper into sync. My heart raced, my stomach flipping as sparring turned to a sort of dance. Our speed increased, the force of each blow escalating as I put my whole heart into each one, missing the connection by centimeters at a time. We both panted, fighting for air but not willing to slow down. Then, instead of blocking, Jamin caught my wrist above his head, his free hand slipping around my waist and yanking my body to his. My body lit on fire as I felt his breath on my lips. He dropped my wrist, his hand sliding down my cheek and coming to rest on the side of my neck. Valerie, he whispered, as if the words were meant for someone else. My heart raced, curiosity overtaking every other instinct. What was he doing? What was this? His forehead met mine, and I could feel the shake of his body. His lips warmed my own as he hovered a sliver away, and the sweet suspense was too addicting to break with the kiss I so badly wanted. All too quickly, his grip loosened and he backed away, the sudden coldness of his absence sending a shiver through me. Sorry, I thought you were- Yeah, no, me too. I blabbered. Thought I was who, exactly? He did say Valerie, didn't he? Did he just mean that he thought I was the old me? Wasn't I? My body fought to relax, but my limbs were weighted, and I wasn't sure if it was from the rigorous training or whatever that was at the end. Say something. Anything. I wasn't sure if I was mentally begging him or myself, but the dead silence was dragging on for too long. Are we finished training? I blurted out. Jamin brushed past me. Yes. I followed him out, and the first traces of light lanced my vision. I squinted through the brightness, using my arms to block out the bulk of the sun's rays. Jamin turned to look at me, his eyes widening like he saw a ghost. His wings spread. Wait, you're not going to leave me here, are you? The blank expression on his face said yes, but he didn't offer a verbal reply. Because we're all the way at the top of this mountain and I don't have wings. 
he stared at me, seeming to consider whether or not he was obligated to bring me back to the city. I sighed. Look, I don't know what happened or who he mistook me for, but let's just forget the whole thing. His wings sagged in resignation, but he never took his eyes off me. He walked over and I prepared for the jolt of being suddenly lifted into the sky. Instead, he grabbed me, his lips descending on mine with fierce intensity. Holy shit. Desire lit inside me, and my tongue collided with his as I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him closer. His hands gripped my ass as he lifted me, and he pushed me against the cold stone wall. His body tightened against mine, and I felt the bulge of his pants grinding between my legs, fueling me with waves of excitement and pleasure. He pulled away slowly, and I panted, still pressed between his body and the rocky wall. His dark eyes were filled with something new. He looked completely at ease. How is he calm when I feel like I'm seconds from exploding into a million pieces? I can't forget the whole thing happened, he said, and I knew those words meant something different for him than they did for me. He backed away slowly, and I slid down till I was back on my feet, my head dazed and cloudy. He smirked. And now, neither can you. I crossed my arms. You think you're pretty cute. His face turned serious, and he closed the gap between us. Despite myself, I leaned in for another taste, but he bobbed back to avoid me. I have my moments. A shrill cry drew our attention. Gliding down toward us was a giant hawk. Farage. My gaze drifted back to Jamin, whose hands were crossed behind his back as if he didn't trust them. I eyed him. So I guess you're going to pretend to hate me again. He shot me an amused glare and mouthed one word that sent me reeling. My body buzzed, my stomach filled with flutters, and my heartbeat echoed the two unmistakable syllables on his lips. Tonight. Chapter 9. Ciel. I burst through the doorway a mixture of horror and fear swelling inside me as I stormed deeper into the small room. Irina stood, her eyes wide, her palms facing me as if I could be calmed with any kind of explanation. Tell me I'm wrong, Irina. Tell me this isn't what I think it is. The room was lit with candles, and the bulk of the space was taken up by a large stone slab where a snow-white corpse lay. I recognized the woman immediately, Thorne's late wife, Lily. She looked frozen in time, wounds healed, decay halted. My eyes bulged as I tried to blink away the strangeness, the absolute defiance of nature. Calm down, Irina inched toward me. Calm? What the fuck, Irina? Why is she still here? A warm voice boomed from behind me. Because I couldn't let her go. Thorne stepped into the room, pressing his fingertips together. His eyes were somber, but his statuesque frame was full of tension. I reeled, my gaze creeping back to Lily's waxy corpse. How is she here, Thorne? Why isn't her body in nether with her soul? How is this even possible? Thorn and Irina exchanged a loaded glance, but the answers didn't come fast enough. In the history of Lux, there has never been a corpse. The ashes always swept beings in their entirety to nether. If they chose to move on, they were consumed with light, physical form and all, so... What the fuck was this abomination? Ciel, Thorne said. I need you to calm down. I put my hands on my hips and started to pace. White skin, white hair, white, dry lips. 
How are you keeping her here? Why hasn't she decayed? Irina came up behind me and started to herd me back toward the door. Let's get out of here. How could you keep something like this from the other Valkyries? They ushered me into the corridor and toward the staircase, though it was faster to head to the cliffs where I'd flown in and fly to the top of the palace. Thorn took a deep breath as the anticipation ate away at my nerves. Someone needs to start answering questions. Thorin rubbed the tip of one of his pointed ears. I don't know what you want me to say. It's my business, and I have nothing to say about it. I think we're past that. This defies the order of things. It could be the reason the Riven have gotten more powerful. It could be related to how they're getting through. It's not, he said sharply. Irina's voice was so soft, I almost missed what she said. Perhaps we should give Thorn time to sort through how he'd like to- To hell with that. Thorn stopped short. Fine then. Tell me how King Tayo wound up in Nether on your watch. I swallowed a lump in my throat, and a torrent of anger and sadness swept through me, straining for release. I punched the wall and welcomed the ringing pain in my knuckles as the crack echoed through the hallway. I stared at the floor, my body going numb to block out the memory of the eclipse night. I supposed we were all keeping secrets. Giant, invisible wedges divided us. Those were the real ruptures. No doubt the gaps the Riven used to slip through. Thorn exhaled through his nose, then continued walking without looking back. I'd appreciate it if you'd keep this between us. Keep what? You didn't tell me shit. I pushed past him. Irina interjected. You know what it feels like to lose someone. I hesitated only for a moment before I turned back the way I'd come from, back toward the cliffs. Thorn had dismissed me, but I still felt the need to escape. Nothing was as it seemed. Irina and Thorn had a secret, all right, but not the one I was looking for. I spread my wings, the wind howling as it pushed past the opening. The feeling of betrayal pulsed through me, and I wasn't sure which part of it bothered me the most. The fact that Thorn had his dead wife hidden in the palace for a whole year or the fact that they had a way to delay someone from being swept away to Nether, and they didn't use it on Tayo. There was only one person I needed, one person who would know what to say, but she was locked away in Valerie's lost memories. It was almost worse with her here, only seeing small glimpses of the real her than it was when she had disappeared completely. I took to the sky, pushing my wings to the limit to beat out some of my pent-up frustration. I didn't know what I was going to tell Jamin, or if I should obey Thorn and keep what I'd just discovered to myself. I flapped my wings, the pink feathers pushing against the wind as I soared higher and higher, until sweat trickled down the back of my neck. I leveled out my wings and caught my breath as I glided back toward the mountain where I'd left Jamin and Valerie. As I neared, I was surprised to see three figures on the flat of the summit. The wind carried their voices away, but I could see brightness in Farage's face as he spoke and see laughter as it burst from Jamin and Valerie. My chest warmed as I eased in for my landing, deciding that very second not to tell them. Chapter 10 Valerie I tried to compose myself as we waited for Farage to land beside us, spearmint still lingering on my lips, my body still revved up from our interlude. Holy fireworks! What the hell was that? Who is this new version of Jamin and what the hell flipped the switch? Play it cool, Valerie, it was just a kiss. What's a kiss between ex-friends with benefits, right? But my more rational thoughts kept getting drowned out by the memory of that kiss. 
which receded and crashed down on me like the ocean at high tide. What had he meant by tonight? Were we back to benefits tonight? Was there something else going on here? My memories, though locked away, were all still inside. They had to be. Otherwise, how else could I explain how quickly he'd turned me into a giant hormone? I craved answers, but our time was cut short as Faraj's bones cracked, and he morphed into the hulking, bearded man with the same soulful eyes as the hawk form. His gaze bounced between Jamin and me. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Of course not. Training. Jamin blurted at the same time. Faraj's smile lit his own face. He opened his arms and went straight in for a hug with Jamin. Jamin shoved him playfully. Nothing happened, man. You can't say this like I haven't caught you two a thousand times. He nodded to me. Look at Valerie's face. Jamin turned to me, and though I had no way of knowing what I looked like, the scorching heat gave me a pretty good idea. Faraj chuckled. You could have gone easy on her. It might have been the millionth time for you, but she looks like you just gave her her last first kiss. Jamin's gaze softened, his smile sending infinite waves of heat to my cheeks. Don't talk about me like I'm not standing here. You heard the man? Nothing happened. All of my wittier retorts were locked away in my paralyzed body. I looked up to the sky as if breaking eye contact could give me a second to compose myself when I spotted CL approaching, and fast. It was the perfect excuse to worm my way out of the awkward moment from hell, or nether. Look, it's CL. My attention shifted to her, allowing me to recover, but as she drew closer and her furrowed brow and intense stare came into view, it became clear that something was up. Damn it, there was never a dull moment around here. Her pink and black wings stretched beside her to their maximum length as her feet met the summit, and she retracted them as she landed. Ciel, is everything okay? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? Her words were casual, but her steely voice matched her face. She grabbed Jamin by the arm and pulled him out of earshot. Faraj's raised eyebrows reflected my curiosity, but he graciously stayed with me and drew my attention to the conversation so I wouldn't try and watch Jamin's expression for clues. Faraj grinned. So, how's the training going? I straightened. I found a feather in my bed this morning. His eyes widened and he scratched at his thick beard. Yours? I shoved him. Of course, mine. Congratulations. It won't be long now. He kicked at a loose stone. Is, uh, something going on with them? He asked, nodding to CL and Jamin. They're leaving me out of the details, but from what I gather, they're looking for something. He nodded. The other rupture, most likely. Still, why all the secrecy? I crossed my arms. That's a good point. It seems like all the Valkyries are hiding something. None more so than you. Fair point. Can I ask you something? Why do you shift into a hawk instead of just having wings like everyone else? We all have our own abilities. Tayo used to say they exemplified our best traits. Who? Faraj's gaze dropped to the ground. He was our king. We lost him the night of the eclipse. Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? He took a deep breath that looked loaded with something I couldn't place. We don't know exactly. Only CL was there, and it's one of the things she never talks about. He shrugged. Now Lux has a palace and no king to keep us Valkyries in check. Jamin walked up beside me. His face flushed. He ran a hand through his hair, but didn't take his eyes off the ground. Everything okay? Faraj asked, beating me to the question. He shook his head. CL's wings popped out as she turned to Farage. I'm going to take Valerie home. We should discuss some things before our patrols start at sunset. Wait, if I'm a Valkyrie, I should be part of the conversation. At least tell me what's going on. 
CL and Jamin exchanged a glance, and with the smallest shake of his head, Jamin shot down the idea. It was a slap to the face. I walked up to Jamin, whose eyes again were cold and distant. Please, let me be a part of this. No, I need you to go home. What the hell, Jay? Why do you guys keep cutting me out of everything? If you don't trust me, why are you even teaching me to be a Valkyrie? You are not a full Valkyrie yet. Get your wings and we'll talk. My blood boiled. Why kiss me like that if you were going to turn around and treat me like I don't matter? Farage sucked in a sharp breath. Go home, Valerie. I stepped closer, challenging his gaze. I am home. Jamin's gaze moved beyond me at the same time CL let out a gasp. I spun, and hovering in the air was a dark purple mass that moved like it was alive, almost like fire. Just as quickly as it appeared, the dark mass was extinguished. Chapter 11, CL What the fuck was that? Valerie blurted. The silence that followed dragged on. The rest of us knew exactly what that was. We'd seen it time and time again. It was a portal to Nether, the product of a unique ability only wielded by Valerie. Before the Eclipse Night, we used it for training, especially when things were calm at the rupture. Valerie had always been careful with the ability, so we never worried about the potentially catastrophic consequences of that skill. Now, though, as we stared at a baffled-looking girl, waving her hand through empty space where the portal dissipated, I was sure we were all thinking the same thing. Valerie must have opened a portal the night of the party. In light of the tiny, unstable portal she'd just accidentally made, she seemed like the obvious cause of the Riven getting through. But a week ago, she hadn't been showing any signs of her former self, and certainly no hints of her magic returning. What is it? Why are you all looking at me like that? Farage took a sharp breath in. It was a portal to Nether. What the hell? She asked, those can just pop up anywhere? I sat down on a boulder and cradled my face in my hands. Holy shit, this is a lot. I heard the scrape of Jamin's boots as he walked over to Valerie. You made it. You think I did that? Farage spoke next. Have you ever felt that feeling before? What feeling? It happened all of a sudden. I groaned. He's asking if you accidentally opened a portal the night of the party. There was a long pause, so I looked up from my hands to see Valerie glaring at me. I said accidentally. I stood and walked toward her. We're searching for a way that the Riven slipped through, and you just opened a portal to Nether. It's a logical assumption. Valerie's gaze dropped to her hands. No, it wasn't me. I've never seen anything like that before. Farage put his hand on her shoulder. Maybe you did it and didn't notice? Valerie shrugged him off. I'm telling you, I didn't do it. I reached for her. Calm down, Valerie. Her fist collided with my stomach so quickly I never saw it coming. I doubled over in pain and coughed to try and catch my breath. I said I didn't do it, she spat. Valerie's gaze moved to Jamin. You're awfully quiet. What do you want me to say? That'll do just fine. Taking the distraction as my chance, I lunged for Valerie, but she slipped away from me easily, my own momentum throwing me off balance. I stumbled over. Farage chuckled, and Jamin said, Valerie, let me take you home. I'd rather walk. That would take all day. Good, I need to think. Every single one of you thinks I'm some kind of monster. I may not know much right now, but I know I'm not that. She headed for the edge of the summit. I'm going to find out the truth. Mine 
and all of yours. And when I do, I'm going to save your asses. She scoffed. You assholes. Farage walked over and held his hand out to help me up. She kicked your ass. What happened? I rolled my eyes. She caught me off guard. Do you think it's possible she remembers more than she's letting on? I dusted myself off. It fucking seems like it. Jamin stared at the ground, his eyes cloudy and distant. I'm going to keep an eye on her. Can't let her fall to her doom. You fill Farage in on what you told me earlier, and I'll meet you later to make some kind of plan for how we're going to approach Thorn. Farage's gaze darted between us. Thorn? The return of Valerie's feistiness was a good sign, even if the pain in my gut didn't necessarily agree. We'd sparred a million times, but her lost memories took with them her usual attack patterns. Even as I replayed that cheap shot back in my head, I seriously doubted I could have blocked her. The portals were concerning, though. More than ever, we needed her to be watched at all times. We couldn't have her opening another one by mistake, letting the riven through. It was also hard not to be suspicious about the fact that all of the appearances of Ajax happened near her. Was she letting him in? Or worse, were they knowingly working together? And this amnesia bit was part of their plan. I didn't believe she was a traitor, nor did I intend on ganging up on her like that. But her Valerie-esque promise left me feeling at least a little hopeful. After the eclipse night, we'd all found a way to bury the parts of that night we didn't want to face. But Valerie's return was stirring it all back up. We were fooling ourselves if we thought we could just move on without confronting what had happened. Maybe Valerie was right. Maybe the only way through all of this was to dig up everyone's secrets and let the chips fall where they may. I pressed a hand to my stomach as my memories slung me back to that horrible night. The night when my reckless actions had killed our king. Chapter 12 Valerie I pressed my body against the sharp rock face as I eased myself down the cliff's edge one shaky step at a time. My heels dangled over the precipice as the wind whipped at my back and threatened to toss me to oblivion. Portal magic, huh? It had to be something sketchy. Of course they're suspicious of me. I'm suspicious of me. As a matter of fact, I'm suspicious of everyone. It feels like every time I'm with more than one of the Valkyries, they pull the other away to have some secret powwow. Ugh. All of this would be easier if I knew what the hell was going on. My foothold gave out, my stomach dropping and my heart slamming into my chest as my foot dangled over the open air to the sharp rocks at the foot of the cliff. My muscles ached as I clung on, my body coming down off adrenaline as I retraced my steps to a solid stone. I felt a gust of wind behind me, and Jamin entered my periphery, hovering on the steady wind that was blowing up the cliff's edge. What do you want? I called. You're going to fall and die. Let me take you home. I don't need your help, I shouted as I reached clumsily for another foothold. He sighed. Clearly. Besides, you all think I'm causing everything anyway. Maybe I should go to Nether with my people. My heart jumped tightening my grip as Jamin landed beside me on the cliff's edge. I don't think you belong in Nether. I don't know about that. You certainly didn't speak to that effect when CL was accusing me. His jaw bulged, and in one smooth motion, he wrapped his arms around my waist and pushed off the cliff. I waited for the sensation of weightlessness to hit, the pull of his wings against the air, but there was only falling. His gaze was locked on me, but his expression was unreadable. When I was certain we'd slam into the rocks, 
His wings spread, and he cradled me onto his chest as we flattened out and glided toward the fields below. Once we were low enough, I pushed off him and tumbled onto the ground. Jamin landed gracefully in front of me. I felt the words rise to meet my anger, but before they reached my lips, he said, You are not the Valerie I know. He sat on a large stone and sighed. I crossed my arms. This should be good. The Valerie I knew would be insulted if I ever jumped in to defend her. She needed no one. His gaze lifted to me. I still don't know why she chose me. His dark eyes were riddled with pain. And without saying it, I could see how much he loved the girl he lost. But he was right. I wasn't her. I didn't know him the way she did. I didn't share the memories that bound them. The Valerie I knew could fix the Valkyries, just like you said, because everyone believed in her. It wasn't just me she knew so well. It was all of us. I get it. I know nothing, so I'm not her. He shook his head. No. The night of the eclipse, the Valerie I knew opened a portal to Nether. I begged her not to go, to stay and fight beside me, but she left. She chose Ajax. I didn't think she'd ever return. He stood, stepping closer. There was nothing I wanted more at that moment than to be her. I wanted the hopeful look in his eyes to be for me. But it wasn't. It was for a girl who knew exactly who she was. She hasn't returned, I said, halting him. Maybe not, he said, stepping into my space. But maybe you could help me figure out why she left that night. We can sort it out together. I felt exposed. The total disadvantage of him possessing a lifetime of memories of me, while I only had a few weeks of him, was overwhelming. There was something fierce inside me that was drawn to him, desperate for his touch, but if I gave in, he'd discover the truth in no time. I was not Valerie, not the one he knew, and I couldn't bear to disappoint him. If I was objectively looking at the facts, it didn't seem like a good sign that Valerie willingly went to Nether during an attack, leaving the rest of the Valkyries to fend for themselves. Especially along with Ajax, a known Nether sympathizer. Jamin watched me, and I crossed my arms as if they could hide me. It was just a crush. Surely only that. I won't kiss you again, he said, stretching his arms above his head, a smile playing at his cheeks. He sighed. It's just, you look so much like her. His hand came to rest on my cheek, and he looked into my face, his smile growing. Is he sure he's not going to kiss me? Because it feels like he is. The memory of our recent kiss fogged my brain, and I instinctively leaned a little closer. He wiped his mouth as if he could wash away the expression. Friends, then? He asked, holding out his hand. Or, hear me out, we could get it on in this field right now and release some of the tension. I reached to shake his hand and blindly agree, but it seemed too easy to let him off the hook so easily. I have questions first. His eyebrows rose. One. Three. Fine. Two. I had a hundred, but two would at least get me somewhere. So it's safe to assume we weren't just friends with benefits. He pressed his lips together and broke eye contact. I chuckled. That's what I thought. Why didn't you tell the others what Ajax said about me? He shrugged. He's Dusk's Valkyrie now. There's no reason to trust him over you. I wasn't sure how I'd missed it. But now that I'd had a peek behind the curtain, I could see his obvious pain. You loved her. I said flatly. Hell yeah. I nodded and held out my hand. Friends. But as he shook it, I saw my own lie reflected in his eyes. It wouldn't hold. The only thing I didn't know yet 
was who would give in first. Chapter 13 CL The second Farage realized where I was going with our conversation, he asked to be excused from knowing. His lack of curiosity made me feel like he might have known about it all along. He didn't seem to believe Lily's corpse was related to the Riven getting through, nor was he quick to suspect Valerie. I thought Valerie opening a portal would have been an obvious indicator that she was probably the one who'd opened a rupture the night of the party. It was frustrating to watch him dismiss that theory so quickly. As the sun started to set, I prepared myself for a potentially grueling night shift. The Riven had always been more active at night, though things had been quiet since the night of the party. A shadow rushed past me and I drew my sword. Jamin swooped down and landed beside me. There you are, I said, sighing. Farage didn't want to have anything to do with Thorne's project. I'm not surprised. Thorne isn't exactly someone you want against you. He'll probably be mad you told us. Whatever. If it helps the realm, so be it. He sucked a sharp breath through his nose and bit down on his bottom lip. Ah, uh, well, there's something else. I put my hands on my hips, suddenly acutely aware of the nervousness seated in his quick, agitated movements. I need you to back off of Valerie. Are you serious? Did you not see the portal? What's with everyone? She's innocent until proven guilty. I rolled my eyes. I don't think she did it on purpose, but we can't dismiss the facts. We have no facts, not yet. I'm still with you. We can find out how the Riven got through, but I don't want to waste time with the assumption that Valerie did it. She's getting her abilities back. That's all. It doesn't mean she's strong enough to let anything through, let alone the horde that rushed us the night of the party. Unless she's lying about her amnesia and you love her too much to admit it. He shrugged. Maybe, but if that's the case, why doesn't she have her wings? She... Wait, why didn't she have her wings? Suspicion is getting the best of you, CL. It's okay to trust your friends. I know you were hurt when she left. So was I. But until we know why she did it, we can't condemn it. Remember who she was? She'd die for any of us in a second. And it only took us one year to forget that. I swallowed a lump in my throat. Fine, but if she stabs us in the back, I'll be the first to stop her. I looked him up and down, my lips pursed with doubt. Sure you will. The secrets, the suspicion, none of that is working. If we help her unlock that ability, maybe... Maybe she'll open one large enough for us to get through. Maybe we can try and rescue the king. The sun dropped below the horizon the grassy plain drenched in the final reaches of the orange sunset. Fuck, I hadn't thought of that. You might not want to make an enemy of her. I get it. I'll apologize. He grinned. That's the spirit. I winced through my smile. I didn't like being told what to do, especially when it involved apologizing, but Jamin had a point. Even if that ridiculous, love-struck look had grown more obvious with every day he spent with Valerie, there was no harm in being a little wary of her since he was too far gone to see her clearly. But he was right about playing nice. I wasn't good at it, but I'd have to give it a shot, especially if it could get me a chance to redeem myself for losing the king. And what are we going to do about Thorn? The sky turned a pale blue near the horizon, growing dark above, revealing the stars that hid during the day. He spread his wings and brushed his fingers across the dark feathers, checking them for debris. Didn't your mom ever tell you you'd go blind if you play with that? He ignored me. You spoke to him, right? How is it even possible to keep a corpse out of nether? 
He practically tossed me out of the palace just for asking. A snarl washed through the breeze, but neither of us paid it any mind. This late in the evening, by the rupture, there were sure to be ribbon slipping through. And Irina's in on it. Maybe she's healing Lily's body, keeping it alive until he can, I don't know, somehow retrieve her from Nether. But in any case, you and Thorne want the same thing, to get to Nether. I bet if you hadn't attacked him and framed it as a joint mission, he probably would have gone for it. I twitched. Well, aren't you a diplomat? The ribbon sprung from the bush, its talons cocked to impale. I dragged my sword lazily across the blades of grass before I swept it through the air, cutting through the ash-ridden monster with one smooth swipe. Why don't I take your shift, and you can go try and smooth things out with Valerie, Jamin asked. My eyes narrowed. Are you avoiding going home for some reason? He glared at me. No, I just like to fight is all. Not buying it. He sighed. Me and Valerie are in a good place right now. I don't want to screw that up. When you say a good place, you mean... Friends. I put my hands on my hips. So when you say screw it up, you mean... He drew his sword. Do you want the night off or not? I put my hands up in surrender. Yes, sorry, I wouldn't want to deny you an opportunity to fight. He spread his wings and took off toward the rupture, swooping low to cut down an occasional ribbon on his way. I appreciated his need to analyze, to see things from multiple angles, but I operated on my gut feelings and instincts, and my gut was telling me that whatever was coming during the next eclipse was going to be a whole lot worse than last time. And we were nowhere near ready. Chapter 14 Valerie I splashed my face with water, but it did little to cool the irritation that had built during my journey home. It was admirable that Jamin wanted to give me the benefit of the doubt, but from where I was sitting, that's what he owed me. That's what they all owed me. Both Ciel and Farage, the two people I felt closest to when I arrived, were so quick to assume I was the one who let the Riven into Lux the night of the party. No one really cared that my memories were gone and I had to sort everything out myself. Their eagerness to accuse me made me think that one of them could be responsible. I climbed the stairs and sunk into my bed, defeated. Shouldn't unlocking my ability have felt like a triumph? Instead, getting to know the Valkyries was like joining some bizarre witch hunt. There was no trust between them, and I wondered how they'd defended this realm as a unit for so long. I heard a soft chuckle and jolted to attention, Sitting at the edge of my bed was a stranger. His back was turned to me, but I would have recognized the bony crimson wings anywhere. Ajax. I froze. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same. Have your memories returned? He asked, his voice soft and familiar. No, but the others told me who you are. And they've proved themselves reliable, have they? I took a deep breath. It doesn't take a genius to riddle out that the guy with the creepy wings is the bad guy. He turned to face me, a bright grin on his face. I felt weight crash against my shoulders and turned to see two monstrous wings on my back that matched his. Darkness is always misunderstood. I didn't force you to come with me. In fact, you convinced me to go with you to Nether. I glared at him half mesmerized by the familiarity of his green eyes. And look how that turned out for me. He turned away, and I couldn't place why, but I knew I'd come close to the correct question by the way he'd dodged the challenge. What do you want from me? I pushed. I want you to admit that the Valkyries aren't the heroes you thought. I want you to notice how quickly they turn on you. 
I want you to come to the same conclusion you came to a year ago. That you and I belong in Nether. I felt something move behind me, and looked back only to see my own hideous wings. I fought the urge to scream, if for no other reason than to not show him that he was getting to me. He was trying to freak me out. Surely he wouldn't leave me with these monstrosities? I'm sure you have a hand in their suspicion of me. He gritted his teeth. I was a victim of that. Look, Val, I don't have to do anything. Just bide my time until history repeats itself. You don't trust me and that's fine. Anything I could explain to you would go unheard. You'll discover the truth eventually and when you do, I have no doubt that you'll open a door and cross over to my side of things. If that's true, I wonder why you took the trouble to come here and tell me so. To give you back what's yours. He stood, his wings wrapping around him as dark ashes begun to waft off him. You're not going to leave me with these wings, right? He flashed a smile. And here I thought you'd be grateful. There was a knock at the front door, but I didn't look back. The ashes were growing and I was certain he'd be gone any minute now. Ajax, don't do this. You know what the others will do if they see me with wings like this. And more importantly, you know. His body was engulfed in gray ash. Ajax! I shouted, but the ashes fell away to an empty room. The door crashed open and CL barged through. I tried to stand, but the weight of my new wings threw me off balance. Where is he? She shouted. Gone. I dropped my face into my hands, too afraid to find out what she'd say when she saw my wings. She stopped short when she saw me. I was expecting a gasp, but her stunned silence was much worse. CL, it's not what you think. Her hand clutched my arm, helping me to my feet, and I felt the sting of rising tears. She took me by the arm and led me out the front door. This time I heard gasps as the dwellers peeked through their windows, and I ducked my head in shame. Where's Jamin? I asked, but my question went unanswered as we made the long uphill slog to the palace. I wanted to offer her an explanation, to tell her that Ajax wanted the Valkyries to doubt me. But by the time we'd made it halfway to the palace, the wings felt as much mine as my own hands. I spread the bone-like talons, flexing the muscles in them and relishing the power I felt there. A smile slipped onto my face, and I looked up to see Argus's small face peeking out of a window, his eyes wide, the glass fogged in front of him. The moon slipped behind the clouds, plunging us into darkness, and I felt a surge of power run through my body. We reached the palace, and CL didn't pause to address me. Instead, she led me silently through the hallway and pushed open a door with more force than was necessary. She tossed my arm as if that would somehow toss me into the room as well, and I walked calmly into the bedroom. The bed had a large canopy over it, and Thorn lay strewn across it. He pulled his sword off a side table, only to place it down as he tried to make sense of me. She was talking to Ajax. I found her like this. I took a deep breath through my nose. I'm guessing from your expression you're not psyched about me getting wings. Thorn strode over. Valerie, this doesn't look good. I don't think they're so bad. Why do you have these? He said, his gaze affixed firmly on the dark wings. Ajax showed up in my bed. I insulted his wings, and he gave me these. Gave you? His eyes moved beyond me to CL. Where is Ajax? He was gone by the time I got to her, but I heard Valerie calling for him. Have your memories returned? Thorn asked. I shook my head. But she created a portal today. Go fetch Irina. I felt oddly calm as Ajax's prediction played out. One look at the wings and Thorn and CL were convinced of what I was. Maybe I'd done the same to Ajax. 
I wasn't sure what would come next, but I knew I was about to learn a lot more about who the Valkyries truly were. Chapter 15, CL I was in no mood for Irina's compassionate temperament, not with the mountain of evidence that we had against Valerie. Ajax was the only Valkyrie that had ever been seen with that type of wings. It was a mark of darkness. I could have sworn I saw her snickering as I walked her to the palace. The betrayal filled me with rage. But in quiet moments like this, as I searched the palace for Irina, the anger turned into an ache of sadness. How could she... And worse, what was Jamin going to say when he found out? He'd already lost her once, and now he would find out she'd betrayed us during the eclipse, weakened us during the party, and fooled us into believing she was innocent through it all. We had all been so eager to trust her. Are you all right? Irina asked as she hurried toward me. My body shook and I was afraid that I might cry or even scream if I tried to explain what had happened. I didn't want to hear what she had to say. I couldn't bear for her to tell me to calm down or tell me Valerie was innocent. She had already made such a fool of me. What happened? She pushed. I turned without explanation, and she followed me to Thorne's room. Irina stopped in the doorway, her hand rushing to her mouth, her eyes filled with horror. She took a moment before she ventured into the room, giving a wide berth to Valerie as she moved in front of her. Thorne walked over and put his arm around Irina. I think we should lock her up. We need to figure out if she's the one letting the riven through. Sadness washed through Irina's expression, and she nodded. Thorne's gaze moved to me. We need to keep Jamin away. He's not going to handle this well. Maybe if he saw her, we can't risk it. I began to pace. It'll be worse if he finds out on his own. We should at least tell him what's going on. Thorne paused for a minute to consider it, then nodded. Fine, but handle it delicately. Wait, me? What the hell did I just sign myself up for? You're making a mistake, Valerie said half-heartedly. Anger flared inside me, but Thorn beat me to it. It's much too late for that. I did not betray you. But our minds were made up. Her hideously bony wings were a constant confirmation of her betrayal. I followed as Thorn brought her to the lower levels of the palace deep into the cliffs, in a room not unlike where Thorne kept Lily's body. Valerie didn't speak another word on her behalf, nor did she make eye contact with any of us. But I couldn't find any empathy inside me to offer her. Good souls were at stake. We couldn't risk any more for her. Not after tonight. I paced until sunrise my nerves on edge as I contemplated the horror of what was coming next. Jamin would finish his shift and wonder why Valerie wasn't waiting for him in his apartment, and I would somehow have to deliver news of these events. Handling emotional issues delicately wasn't my strong suit, but even if it was, I doubt that would be enough to calm Jamin. Surely, once I explained about the wings, he'd understand. The sun rose into a beautiful morning, drenching Lux in a lovely golden light. The leaves of the window's plant box rustled, alerting me that Jamin had arrived home, but I hadn't settled on what I'd say to him. I stretched my arms nervously, trying to rid them of some of my pent-up energy when he came through the door. His head was beaded with sweat, but he looked cheerful, pleasant even, as he greeted me. He leaned back, trying to get a view of Valerie's bed. She's still asleep, he asked with a chuckle. Jamin, take a seat. Something happened. 
His smile died, his gaze searching around the room. Where's Valerie? She's safe, I said quickly. Yesterday, when I arrived, she was talking to Ajax. Taking my earlier suggestion, he walked over to the table and had a seat. Jamin's gaze connected with mine. I didn't hear much of their conversation, and Ajax was gone by the time I made it all the way inside. His Adam's apple bobbed. Valerie's wings had come in. That's a good thing, right? What's this about, CL? Spit it out. Her wings looked like his. Bony, ashy, and gloomy. Marked by the darkness. Thorn has her at the palace, you know, just to keep an eye on her, to make sure she isn't letting any riven through. He got to his feet and went straight for the door. I need to talk to her. Thorn forbids it. He thinks it won't be a good idea, given your history with her. He stopped short and spun to face me. My history with her? Are you serious, CL? We all have history with her. You know what I mean. This is ridiculous. I'm going to see her. I moved to stop him, but he was already out the door. I spread my wings and took off after him. Fuck, of course he wasn't going to let this go. But letting Valerie out could surely cause more harm than keeping her there as a precaution. It was up to me to stop him from making an impulsive, emotionally driven mistake. Chapter 16 Valerie You had to wonder, if these were such good people, why did they have a dungeon on hand? The space was windowless and made of sand-colored stone, with aggressive torches that flickered light throughout the ten-by-ten-foot coffin. Thorn had put me in there and left immediately, no doubt needing some time to strategize, and that suited me just fine. If they thought I was going to sit here and sulk, or better yet, lament over my actions, they had the wrong girl. I didn't know for sure whether I was guilty or not of the crimes they accused me of. What did I care what they thought of me, though, when I hadn't yet made up my mind about them? Instead, I chose to occupy my time by flexing the muscles in my new wings, trying to figure out what I had to do to retract them. It seemed like such a neat trick to pull off. Despite their appearance, everything about having wings felt right to me. The space was a bit too small to practice spreading my wings. I had found that out when one had nearly caught fire on one of the torches. Ashes wafted off my wings, and for a moment, I thought they might still be a bit singed. But the ashes didn't come from any one spot in particular. It was the same dusty gray that covered the rupture. The same substance that made up the riven. I twirled, spreading the ashes, feeling them amplify with my indifference. Like the echo of a dream, the whispers started. At first, it was nothing more than a gentle wisp that could have been mistaken for an errant draft or the scrape of my shoes. Then, the sound grew clearer. I froze, leaning close to my wings and running my hands across them. A woman's voice rang through, clear as a bell. Valerie. I spun around, only to find four seamless walls. I walked to each of them, pressing my ear against the rough stone, but the voice wasn't coming from outside. Then it came again, louder this time as if emanating from inside my head. Valerie. Before I could respond, the door swung open, and Thorn walked into my cell. The whispers faded to nothing as he slammed down a stool and sat me onto it with one calculated shove of my shoulder. Did you let the riven in the night of the party? I exhaled my frustration. No, I didn't even know I could do that until this morning. He crossed his arms. Yeah, because of that convenient bout of amnesia. I turned my face away, deciding not to answer any more questions. It wasn't getting me anywhere. You're seriously going to keep me in here like a criminal and you don't even know if I've done anything? You don't know if you've done anything. Wouldn't you prefer to stay here and not risk hurting anyone? 
I'd prefer to get the benefit of the doubt from the people I've been told were my friends for... centuries, was it? He scratched at his goatee. After Ajax betrayed us, we can't trust blindly anymore. And that's why you're losing Lux. He turned away. Aye, Lily. This one's more trouble than she's worth. Who's Lily? I asked. He looked back at me over his shoulder, his eyes blazing with the answers that never made it to his lips. Then he left. The door shut tight behind him. My body tensed as it adjusted to the tiny space, and it took great effort not to feel claustrophobic. I sat on the stool Thorn had brought me and closed my eyes, glad to be alone. I hated the accusatory glares and palpable hatred, especially when I felt like a third-party observer in all this. I took a deep breath, and by the time I'd exhaled it, the whispering started up again. I straightened in my seat, then held perfectly still. The voice grew clearer, echoing as if I were in a grand hall and not a stone prison. Valerie, the voice beckoned. Who is it? But my voice didn't carry like the whispers. It was flat and empty, only present between the four stone walls. I tried again, this time using the voice in my head. Who is it? Come, Valerie. The voice was clear and welcoming, familiar even, but I didn't know where it was coming from or how to go to it. I'm trapped. You are never trapped. Your ability makes it so. My mind slung back to the rupture, those first terrifying minutes in the dark. Are you in Nether? Yes. Make haste. I opened my eyes and stood, rubbing my hands on my face. Even if I knew how, there was no way I was going to willingly step through a portal to Nether. Not for anything. If Nether was the place of all bad things, surely whoever was calling me was leading me into some kind of trap. How can I trust you? You can't, but I mean you no harm. Have faith. Faith. It was the same thing I desired from the Valkyries. That which they'd denied me. You must move quickly. I swallowed a lump in my throat, fear spreading through my chest with each pump of my heart. Was this it? Had I already decided to walk toward the darkness? What's your name? I asked, stalling for time. I didn't expect it to mean anything to me, but when he spoke it, it rang familiar. Dusk. You're the bad guy. I wasn't the one who imprisoned you. Maybe you should decide what's good and what's bad for yourself. I'd heard the name mentioned a few times since my arrival. I mustered my courage and sat back on the stool, closing my eyes to enhance my other senses. Okay, Dusk, tell me what to do. Chapter 17, CL I pushed my wings to their limit, closing the gap between Jamin and me. I was so close that I could bank on his wind current and use it to thrust myself the last few yards. With one hard push, I flung myself toward him and wrapped my arms around his neck. My body slammed into his, throwing off his balance and hindering his wings. We plummeted like two hawks with locked talons. The only way to protect our wings was to retract them and take the brunt of the fall without them. Jamin struggled to free himself, but I hung on. We slammed through a wooden trellis with an arch, the air filling with the snap of split wood as we crashed against it. Jamin groaned and rolled over, but my body was too shocked from the impact to move. Pain flared in my shoulder and on the knee that came down first. Jamin sat up, his dark eyes burning with rage. What do you think you're doing? You can't stop me from seeing her. I just think you need to calm down first and think about this. 
She's safe, and if you go barreling in there angry and loud, trying to set her free, she could do serious harm. It's Valerie. What are you even thinking? She's had the same abilities for hundreds of years, and it's never been a problem before. You don't know that. You're keeping something from us. How did Valerie get pulled to Nether last year? You've never given the details of that night. I think it's because she went willingly. Only Valerie knows why. But the girl I knew would not betray us. The girl you knew did betray us. He stood, shrugging off his obvious pain. You call yourself her friend? You can't take her prisoner like this. You'll only push her away. Jamin, maybe it's her connection to Nether that makes her more susceptible to Dusk's tricks. We need to play this safe. We're all connected to Nether. I balled my hand into a fist. All I'm asking is for you to give it a day or two. Then we're at an impasse, because I'm asking you to at least talk to her and find out from her point of view what's going on. I stood, my body aching, and drew my sword. His eyes widened. I didn't want to hurt him, but it was my job to protect the Lux Realm from all threats, and that's exactly what Valerie was. I won't fight you, he said. You don't have a choice. I lunged forward, my wings springing out to control my landing, but he outmaneuvered me and retaliated with half-hearted parries of his own. We both knew how a sparring match between us would go. My ability to endlessly battle without tiring would eventually wear him down. I felt in control as he stumbled back shot after shot, losing more ground. It wasn't until the palace was in sight that I realized he'd tricked me. He hadn't taken a single serious shot at me, but merely navigated us through the streets toward the palace, his intended destination. I gritted my teeth and felt my body surge with adrenaline as I let my full power overtake me. My muscles tightened, and I saw the flicker of fear in his eyes as my attacks grew deadly. Valerie! he screamed but we were much too far away from her holding cell for her to hear, and even if she could, she'd be unable to help him. Valerie! He screamed again, this time the desperation unmasked in his voice. His wings shot out, propelling him forward. He knocked the sword out of my hand. I scrambled for it, tripping over my own feet as I reached for the hilt. I spun, bracing for an attack, but Jamin made a break for the palace instead. I flew after him, but it was hard to get momentum. He shot through the doors, and I followed closely behind. Valerie, he yelled, expertly weaving through the hallways. I tried to follow his path, but he was a better flyer. I slammed into a corner and crashed down on the marble floor. Fuck. I got to my feet, but my wing was sore. I took off running, which lost me precious time, but spared me from damaging my wings any more than I already had. Luckily, I knew where Valerie was, and he didn't, so I turned through another passage and went straight for her cell. The hallways filled with Jamin's cries as I sprinted, desperate to make it to Valerie before him, before he could let her out and cause the loss of more souls to nether. I leaped down the stairs, feeling my weight crash down on my knees, but I didn't slow. I slid down the hallway. Thorn was outside Valerie's cell, his ear pressed against the door. Jamin's coming, I yelled. He's going to let her out. I drew my sword and took a low defensive position in front of the door. Thorn didn't ask questions. Instead, he drew his own weapon and positioned himself a few yards in front of me. Jamin barreled into the hallway, and he stopped short when he saw us. You can't keep her from me. I need to see her. Not like this, Thorne said. You can't lock up a Valkyrie. She could very well be innocent. You're too close to her to see the truth. Jamin's eyes flared with fire behind them. Why does everyone keep saying that like she hasn't been the person we've all relied on all this time? 
Jamin drew his sword, and Thorne took a deep, meditative breath. I heard him mumble something, no doubt a call to Lily for help, but I couldn't make out the words. Jamin took a step toward us, then dropped to his knees, his eyes wide, his body twitching. Irina stepped up behind him, her hands sparking with electricity. Valerie! He screamed. Irina's brown eyes were tearful. Just let him see her. I'll stop him if he tries to let her out. It was as if Irina had sucked all the tension from the room, quelling all our fears with a few short words. Jamin wiped his face and struggled to his feet, but Irina never let the sparks wane from her hand. Thorn backed away, sheathing his sword and nodding for me to do the same. I wanted nothing more than to punch Jamin. Irina was far too lenient with him, but it wasn't my call. I kept my hand on my hilt, ready to attack if something unexpected were to happen. Jamin limped to the door and pushed it open. I tightened my grip as the color drained from Jamin's face. Chapter 18 Valerie Dusk's voice swelled in my head. Don't fear the darkness. Embrace it as part of yourself. Answer its call. I sat on the stool, eyes closed, palms facing upward, letting my fear flow freely through me, no longer resisting. My hair began to whip around me as a new presence entered the room. Draw it, Dusk said. I opened my eyes to find a dark purple vortex hovering in midair. It was so much like the one I had seen earlier, with the notable exception that this time the dark ashes framed it, pulling at the edges and increasing its size. Letting my instincts take over, I lifted my hand and placed it into the deepest part of the purple portal. The wind whipped through it. I pulled at the edges my hand catching on it as if the plane between realms was solid. I peered into the darkness and saw the shift of shadows moving on the other side. Don't be afraid, Dusk whispered. Seek the truth. I placed a second hand in the darkness and stretched the portal. Be not afraid. You are not alone. I bent my knees, opening the portal down to the stool where I stood. I could see it now, the wild, reckless nether realm, teeming with life on the other side. That's it, Dusk said. Where are you? Why can't I see you? I will guide you. Now, steal your nerve and step through. My breath stuttered as my heart slammed against my chest. I could feel the danger, but I was oddly drawn to it. Dusk had the answers, and everything was one step away. There was nothing left for me in Lux. The truth lay in darkness. I lifted my foot, preparing myself to take the leap. But something stopped me. Jamin had asked to be an ally. He said we'd figure it out together. Time is short, Valkyrie. Step through, Dusk urged. As I stared into the abyss, I could almost hear Jamin calling my name. The door pushed open, and he stepped into the frame. Go, now, Dusk urged. The portal to Nether was nothing compared to the darkness and the hurt in Jamin's eyes. He reached out a hand. Please, don't. I'm sorry, I whispered. And before I could think better of it, I stepped through leaving everything I knew, Lux, the Valkyries, and Jamin, for a chance at the truth. The portal snapped shut behind me, closing off the only window to the light and plunging me into total darkness. This has been Eleven Wings Book Two, CL, written by Brittany Chanel and performed by Lessa Lamb and Brittany Goodwin. 
Stay tuned for the next book. Fly until you reach the silver lining Keep your gaze on the sky Reach out a hand to the silver lining And remember the reason we fly Fly until you reach the silver lining Keep your gaze on the sky Reach out a hand to the silver lining Remember the reason we fly